stop playing. No. Um, this is pretty much it. Uh, I don't get any respect, obviously. You know, I just sit around and sleep and everybody treats me, you know, they put me in the back of the crowd, you know, throw me in the back. There's 300 players in front of me, they step all over my gear, unplug stuff, so it's really depressing and then, you know, So, uh, Excuse me. So do you do you do you feel? <sighs> Go ahead. Do Do you feel that this affects your your musicianship? Um, I think it makes me better. It makes me want to impress them, but they just don't see it. Go ahead. Um, do you feel like you got more respect from the guys in Jeffrey's fan club? Um, I don't think I, well, it's hard to say. Um, when I first joined this band, uh, there is said there's this tradition that Five Iron said that, you know, every time we drive through Kansas we have to pee on it because we don't like it. And I didn't have to go to the bathroom, so... I lay down to go back to sleep and they threw snow on my bed. And this differed from the Jeffries fan club how? Um, we hugged each other. You share a room with uh, other members of your band uh, when you're in hotels. How does that go for you? Every night they throw parties and they don't invite me. I mean, I was here and they didn't even invite me. There's trash everywhere. My bed's unmade, they were on my bed. I don't know what to do. I've heard stories about uh, them bringing their pets on tour and, and making, uh, and giving them your bed on the bus. Mm -hmm. Is it, are these rumors true? Yes. Uh, which, which pet is the worst? Um, Reese's shirts. I noticed uh, an empty Aquafina bottle on the floor. It's not mine. I stopped. Now we have uh, we have some transcripts from the Betty Ford Clinic uh, that you've been you've been checking in and out for years now. That wasn't me. Son, you don't have to lie. Anymore. That wasn't me. I Sonny. can't say anymore. Um. How did you first become involved in Five Iron Frenzy? I was going to shows that were Exmator shows, and I was quite a big fan of theirs. And um, Micah is my cousin, and eventually it came up that they were making a ska band, and they remembered that I played saxophone and asked me to join, and I had nothing better to do, and I thought it would be fun, so I said yes, and so I joined Five Iron Frenzy. Even though at first I didn't like the name of the band. Why didn't you like the name? Um. I thought it was really silly, and I was used to Exmator, and I was way too punk for you, and thought that those kind of names sounded cooler, like uh, Numb Skull and Exmator, not Five Iron Frenzy. But now I like it. Is it weird being in a band with a family member? No, it's good. It's convenient because as I'm the only female, it's good to have another person that I can share a hotel room with, and it's also fun because Mike and I have so much history together that uh, I already know what he's like, so I know that I can always turn to him even if there's problems with other guys in the band. Um, how are things with your family outside of Five Iron Frenzy? I miss them. I miss my mom a lot when I'm on tour, and I miss my dad a lot. And uh, it's always difficult because there's always a dichotomy between you know you have to do what God wants you to do, but you also know that part of what God wants you to do is be um, in your family, be close to your family. So it's Every time I leave, it's very emotional, it's very hard, even though I don't show it to them. Um, I'm always thinking about them. But I know that God honors it when you do what you have to do, and I know this is what He's called me to do. So I don't have too many reservations when I have to leave. Um, how have you felt uh, God moving through you uh, in Five Iron Frenzy? Um, personally, I think that Five Iron has taught me a lot about commitment and that someday when I get married I'll understand what it's like to stick through something because when you're in the band you just don't quit 
And I think that that's God teaching me commitment through the band, even though it originally wasn't my plan for my life to be in this band for eight years. Um, also, I think that um, God has taught me a lot about humility and not to put myself on a pedestal. And God has taught me that He will see me through financially. And, and also, traveling to um, Europe and to Alaska and to Puerto Rico, you see God's people, the church, in all, all types of contexts. You see all different cultures worshiping God, and it's rad to know that um, we all believe in this truth. And it solidifies your faith more to see, wow, I'm not the only one. I'm not crazy. There are thousands of people in every language and every creed that totally believe in Jesus. All right, I'm going to give you a hard one now, okay? Um, how has the death of your brother affected you? The death of my brother made touring insane. Um, the other night we played main stage at Cornerstone, and after the show I went to a tour bus into the back and bawled my eyes out for about 10 minutes. And sometimes the reason I do that is because you can see a sea of people, but there's one person you want to see that you know you won't see. And it hurts because you want to make everyone happy and you want to be the cheerleader on stage. And I enjoy it. I am not faking it. I really like that. But at the same time, there's an overwhelming sadness that overrides me at times and reminds me that he's not here. He would have liked these bands that are coming out and he's not going to hear them. He would have liked these um, to be at this festival with me and he's not going to be there. But at the same time, the death of my brother has made me a more gentle person because I've had to love my mom like he loved her. He was very gentle and very soft-spoken and beautiful and absolutely opposite of me. And I'm very loud and abrasive and competitive. And I've had to learn to be more balanced and learn to um, encompass the kind of qualities that God gave him so that I can be a more balanced person. So, But it makes touring very, very difficult because when you say goodbye to people, you get emotional because you don't know, you don't know when you'll see them again. And that sounds very fatalistic and sad, but at the same time, it's something you, I deal with every time I leave now. It's sort of a panic. Uh, would you rather be punched in the face once or three times in the stomach? Three times in the stomach because I'm vain. Really? And I wouldn't want my braces to get messed up. That'd be expensive. Um, is it true that you can't smell? It is true. Occasionally, I'll get a smell of coffee, or a smell of an orange, or maybe gasoline, but it's not really a smell, it's more of a burn. Because certain scents burn, you know, your smell receptors or whatever. But I once did a test on myself and tasted different Skittles when I was up blindfolded, and I don't tell the difference. Everything's just sweet, and I don't smell uh, my own underarms. Brad smells them for me and tells me if I stink. Have you ever had a crush on any of the guys in the band? People want to know that. <coughs> Just kidding. You had a crush on any guys in the band? No, I've never had a crush on any of the guys in the band. And I think that that is a gift of the Lord. Because if you put eight guys together or seven guys together, there's a chance I'd probably have a crush on one of them. But it's totally been ordained by God that I would not. Most of the guys don't really pay attention to what I'm doing because they know that I can take care of myself. So if there's other guys um, talking to me, they know that I'm, I'm, I can usually hold my own and take care of myself. Um, if anyone's ever mean to me, though, they better watch out because Andrew becomes like an older brother and gets very, very protective of me very quickly. Hi. <laughs> New things are being done. Well, we sent someone off to do merch. Okay. <laughs> What's his name? I don't know. He has all of our money. Um, okay. I know you've been asked this a million times before, and we just want to get it down for the records so that no one will ask you ever again. How did you get the name Leonor? I got the name Leonor after my great-great-great-grandmother, Leonides. And so my parents made my name Leonor Inez because they wanted people to be able to pronounce it. And anyway, Leonides looks like Lionares, and nobody really wants that name. What about those people out there who actually who, uh, do have that name? Do you think they don't want it? Lionares? Well, if they're in Mexico and they're Leonides, they're probably okay. But if they're Lionares, they might be a little, you know, they might grow up with a, a chip on their shoulder. Mm. Um, Johnny Cash said it was hard being a boy named Sue. Yes, he did. Is it hard being a girl named Jeff? It's not hard being a girl named Jeff, except for when you're dating someone and they happen to mention it off to someone else and everybody assumes that they're homosexual. Have you ever been accused of being homosexual? 
When I was in college and I had a mohawk and um, one long earring, um, my roommate at the time was from Nebraska and her parents said, don't move in with her, she's a lesbian, which I never was. But um, it hurt because I went to a Christian college and people had a lot of rumors about me. And then now that I come back, I'm a big celebrity. I mean, everybody at lunch wants to sit by me and I don't know, I'm just not into it. Have you ever driven your car out into the middle of a field? Yeah, I'm sure I have, many times. In fact, I've gotten in a lot of accidents where I've rolled cars and gotten corn embedded in my ears and such things. So, yeah, I've driven my car pretty much everywhere you're not supposed to, which is why they don't let me drive the bus. I, I've heard you have an imaginary friend named Chach. Explain actually, Chach. Actually, his name is Ricky, and he is the uh, epitome of Ralph Macchio when I was younger. And I'm in the bus for hours upon a time, and I just... Picture him riding a motorcycle, you know, kind of looking at me, waving, saying everything will be all right. And that imaginary friend is what keeps me, keeps me going to the next city because I wonder who's going to be there when I get there. Nobody that I know, but maybe that invi invisible Ralph Macchio will be there. And I don't want him older. I want him younger, Daniel with a D, you know, kind of hot. And, uh, I mean, it was hot for me then because I was eight, but it's still hot to me now because... I remember, you know, I remember how he looked at the other girl that he liked that was a jerk and never loved him anyway and went out with a skeleton guy. But if he's out there, he should call me. If you had to fight with the Cobra Kai, would you? Um, you know, I'm not really political. I understand the Cobra Kai and their Zapatista ideals, but I try to stay out of that kind of stuff because I'm not a communist when it really comes down to it. And when you try to mix NAFTA and rules like this and democracies, it just gets really, really tangly. And I'm, you know, I'm all about book burning, but I think that the Cobra Kai goes a little bit too far as far as burning TVs and such like that. So I probably wouldn't fight any of them also because they're in the jungle and I just... Snakes. Yeah. Snakes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Ha, 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 ha. Is it difficult being in a band and having a wife at the same time? It can be very difficult when we're on tour and she's not with us. Um, when she's on tour, it's usually not too bad. There's like some weird stuff about like uh, just being away from home and, and having a lot of different stuff to deal with, but we, we do pretty good with it. We handle pretty well. Um, I know you don't have any children, uh, but you do have a puppy, dude. Yes. You? Uh, well, uh, describe your puppy for, for, the, for the kids. Well, it's a, it's a beagle, and uh, right now she's eight months old. And she's little still and stuff, but yeah, she's ball of energy. <laughs> She's totally like our baby. Like when we left for this, um, it was the first time that we left her overnight at, at someone else's house. And so we we're like t taking like an hour explaining all these little details about it. It's like <laughs> we have a little baby that we're leaving at someone's house. It's crazy. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of family, you have uh, your mom's here at Cornerstone. Uh, uh, what, what exactly is it you what exactly is it that uh, your mom does around here well she does this uh, ministry called mash and um, it's a lot of just uh, getting to know bands and praying for them and and being a support for um, having like a network of all these different bands praying for each other and and supporting each other when things are going wrong and stuff like that you're one of the founding members of scum of the earth aren't you yep uh, could you explain Scum of the Earth a little? Um, sure. <laughs> Scum of the Earth is, is like a, a fringe kind of church like for people that feel left out at other churches, like they, they don't feel like they fit or something. Yeah. Um, have there been any uh, struggles with Five Iron Frenzy over the years that you've, um, that you've faced? Yeah, we've had, we've had some problems. Um, not anything... Not anything that would really like totally pull us apart, but there's been a few little things about. Um, I can't think of anything specific, but it's been actually it's pretty amazing how smoothly the band has run for, you know, uh, going on our eighth year now. It's and we've only had one member change. It's pretty amazing. It's totally God's hand, like 
keeping us together. <laughs> How did uh, Scott's leaving affect you? Um, it was it was kind of hard. Um, just at first when when he was talking about how he wanted to leave, it's it was hard to just um, deal with having having that change. You know, we've been we were the same people for s such a long time, and that's how we started. It was it was hard to have a, any kind of change within the lineup, but um, um, it's, I think it's been a bless blessing for both us and him because uh, he's I think he's grown a lot since then and um, it's been better for him to be away from the band and, and uh, it's been really great having Sonny with us too I think he I think he works well with our band so. um, off stage you're probably one of the most mellow people I've ever met on stage <laughs> you are a complete ball of energy and probably more hyper than anyone else how do you explain this I don't know it's I get possessed while I'm on stage. I don't know. It's just like, it's the real, like, it's just real release when I get up on stage. And I just have fun with it and get all my energy out on stage and stuff. Yeah. Um, if you could either be invisible to the human eye or turn yourself into a, a movable puddle at will, which would you do? Um, be invisible. <laughs> Why is that? Um, I don't know, it just, it sounds a lot more fun than being a puddle <laughs> of mud or whatever. <laughs> what do you think of the band Puddle of Mud? Well, it's a great name. Uh, <laughs> um, great names like Puddle of Mud and Uba Stank and, I don't know, <laughs> some winners out there. <laughs> Um, you are you are a member of uh, an infamous three uh, three horn section. How many banks have you robbed in the last five years? <laughs> How many banks? Um, well, I don't know about the other guys, but I've only done one. Really? Do you, are you afraid that they might be? Uh, we kind of work separate sometimes, so <laughs> like the whole cell system. <laughs> You know, kind of, kind of one of those, uh, those terrorist at faction cell system. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to show off your tattoos for the camera? Um, I guess so. Sure. All right, you can be as you can be as bad looking as you want to be. <laughs> it's a dove, and that one. Well, that one says faith. All right. That's it's a dove. Mm -hmm. Have a dove. Sacred Heart there, mm -hmm. and that one says love. Right. Yeah. And this one, me and my, oh, oh get screwed up first. Hopefully I don't have tons of zits or something. <laughs> <laughs> this one, uh, me and my wife got for our marriage, and the birds represent me and her being right. unified through God. Right, cool. Right on. So sticky. <laughs> yeah. After such an amazing single with such strong melodies like Go, Go, Combat Chuck, Pick It Up, how are we going to come back with another single? I mean, how are you going to follow that? So I guess you could consider us like a one hit wonder. After something like that strong, how can we come back and make something, some other single that's going to top that? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Brad Dunham, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, dude. Thanks. Please. No sweat. Yeah. Totally. Thank you so much. No sweat, dude. No problem. Yeah. Got to be there for the fans. Yeah, you do. Yeah. We have a lot of fans around these uh, these trash heaps, don't you? Yeah. They, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like tend to hang around the trash heaps, so I think the fans know where to look. Right. Right. So. Um, uh, now. You're, a, you're part of a, a, a smaller church, or actually a rather large church out in Denver, Colorado. It's a mid-sized church where we draw about 300, uh, 200 to 300 people, depending on the time of year, like college students are. are... Hey, you're from Five Iron Frenzy, you're the guitarist? No, I'm the drummer. The drummer. Yeah. Right, well, even though you're not um, Reese, will you want to sign my pants? Oh, um, okay, I guess, sure. Yes, I'm in a band. What band? Uh, Five Iron Frenzy. Oh God, you're gonna suck. You sign my pants though. Just sign my okay. autograph. Okay. All right. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, so, anyways, uh, what I was saying. Hi. Hi. You're a good drummer. You want some? I don't know. I like you and stuff. You make me sound like you. Uh. Okay. Thanks, man. Oh, okay. Sorry, buddy. See you later. So, anyways, yeah, it's it's about uh, it, it's it ranges from like 200 to 300 people, and it's pretty cool. We have fun, and we uh, you know listen to sermons and uh, <coughs> eat chocolate. Uh, now, now is the music uh, more traditional or more contemporary? Um, in the service? Yes. Uh, the music is fairly fairly contemporary. Um, it's. I mean, we take uh, like a lot of old hymns sometimes, and we'll, you know, modernize them a little bit. And, and the the majority of the people that are there, are, that go to the church, are like punk or emo or whatever. Five hundred friends. Hi. Hi. How are you? We were just wondering. Uh, I don't know if you're busy or like or whatever's going on, but uh, we were organizing. We we're just wondering if we need an autograph or something. Like. Yeah. Like. Like my. I'm considering like, maybe on my leg or something. Then I can get that tattooed later on. Okay, okay, you people are out of your mind, all right? You're crazy. What's wrong with you people? Gosh! Man, I'm trying to conduct an interview here, and you crazy freaks keep coming up to me and asking for autographs, and can you sign this, and my neck, and my ear? Just go away. Just go away. Seriously. But I love you. You're crazy. Gosh. Wow. So... Uh, I guess the crazy people. So, what would you say you uh, you like best about being in Five Iron Frenzy? <clears throat> um, what I like best about being in Five Iron Frenzy, definitely the fans. I'd have to say the fans are the coolest part about being in the band. Uh, they're real supportive, and uh, uh, you know they're they're real cool. They they, they totally support our band. Hi, Andy, how you doing? Hi. I just oh wanted to say that I've been following Five Iron for you guys about four years great show. and I have a lot of albums. Oh, you guys are albums. awesome! Hey guys, uh, guys that, that's it. Um, this interview is over. Did you come up with the idea for this shirt? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, where is he at? Where is the guy? I love you too, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for helping out with that. You don't really suck. I was just kidding. <laughs> and I really no, do. No, we do really suck. Right. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. I guess that's it. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Thanks, guys. Thanks so Sweet. Much. <laughs> so, right Yay. On. Thanks, Chauncey. No problem. Hit it. All right. Um... You've been in the band since uh, since Exumator. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel that the band has grown uh, spiritually as well as musically since that? Larger. Uh, elaborate on this. I can all? elaborate. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's see. Like like uh, we've grown spiritually. Well, I mean like I I think that uh, we grow closer to God. I think that it's not of ourselves. We like I think God draws us closer to Him. You know and. I mean, there's uh, some effort and stuff on our part, but I think it, it initially it's God. Um, like, for me, actually, like, like 
I've really like been going through like a cool thing where like I'm like <laughs> my relationship with God has kind of um, overshadowed everything else in my life. So like that's become like the most important thing. It's been pretty cool. Like um, it feels like it feels like I'm, I'm more mature in my relationship with Him. But I have the excitement that I had of, of getting to know Him the, the same that I had when I first got to know Him, like, like when I first became a Christian. So that's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to getting to know Him better every day, you know, through the rest of my life. And then um, as far as the band, uh, musically we've, we've uh, I guess, I guess the, the, the biggest step that we took was, was uh, from like the, like about the, the first record to about like quantity or so, we, we kind of learned how to uh, keep instruments and, and voicings out of out of the way of each other and stuff. Where a lot of times you can have uh, two or three instruments that that uh, have the same kind of they're in the same kind of range uh, sonically, you know, and uh, just just making sure that they're not uh, fighting for attention. Like on the first record, it's just like. I mean, you have to listen to that thing three or four times to really understand what's going on because there's so many different layers and stuff. Where whereas like our later records, it's like I mean, you can listen to it one time through and like your attention is kind of directed by us from one instrument to the next. And it's I think it's just a better a better record. Like Electric Boogaloo is what I'm talking about now. So that um, yeah, and, and and just for for like what we've listened to, like we started we listening to No Effects and and uh, Skank and Pickles, big influences and stuff on the first record and, and then uh, we started listening to more Weezer and more uh, like uh, Jimmy Eat World and, and all the while like having the influences from when we were kids like I grew up with a like a like heavy metal like thrash metal influence and stuff so a lot of intricate guitar stuff tries to bear its head so yes um, how do you do you feel that with the leaving of Scott from the band that uh, you've been able to expand more musically or creatively um yeah, I, I do actually. Like Scott was, Scott is. He's he's a super cool guy, but he definitely like he definitely he's the type of person that needs to be in the, in the lead. Um, like as far as the writing goes, like he doesn't share the reins very well. So um, whereas like like now it's it's like it's a lot more. If if if, if somebody comes to to the band with a, an idea of, of like a song or whatever, and uh, it's not quite where it should be, we'll work on it and work on it until it's there, you know, and uh, I think we've, we've actually had a lot of really good songs come out of that, whereas like before, if it wasn't like up to par right away, then it probably would have never, you know, been recorded, so. Uh, Alright, uh, you and Lena are related to each other. Yes. You're cousins, right? Yeah, I technically we're second cousins. Um, is it weird having a family member in the band? Not really, because like the Ortega family is so big as it is, it's like, you could have, you know, cousins and not even know that they're cousins. So it's like a, just a new person, you know. So like, like I met I met uh, Leonor like probably we were at church camp actually, and she had been going to like Exumator concerts, which was the band before Five Iron. And um, I told her that we were f like forming the side project called Five Iron Frenzy, and and she uh, and we we said I, that we needed horns, and, and she mentioned that she played saxophone. I was like, cool, we should try out. So. Yeah, I mean, it's not weird having family member in the band. It's just, it's just like another person, so it's cool. Now, uh, you're pretty big into the hip hop. Yes. Um, you, what, what, what do you do in terms of that? Because I know you do some stuff. Some yeah, stuff. yeah, I do. Uh, I like, like, I actually got into DJing about, uh, you know, what was it probably '97 or so, like 1997. I got into it, like, and. Um, just been doing it like when, whenever we have off time, I, I mess around with it and I've been recording with uh, some bands. Like there's some stuff on like I'm on um, Echoing Green. Like there's a, a band called the Echoing Green that I, I did some DJing on, and there's uh, some stuff on Soul Junk. Like every once in a while, you'll see some some, some stuff from me. And like like I appear as uh, DJ Mizaika when I'm doing the DJ stuff. So uh, what were these four elements of hip hop you mentioned? Four elements of hip hop are. Uh, break dancing, graffiti, b boying, uh, and DJing. Actually, b boying would be the technical for break dancing, so rapping, so MCing, MCing, DJing, graffiti, and b boying. Uh, so, so as far as MCs or masters of ceremony, yes, as it were, <laughs> yes. Uh, who are your favorites? 
Uh, there's a guy named uh, Ta Talib Kuali. He's very good. Um, there's a guy that's just coming up. His name is Braille. That's pretty good. And I'm, I, I dig a lot of Soul Junk stuff. Like, Glenn Galaxy is really good. Um, there's Ugly Duckling is very cool. And... Uh, That's, I mean, that's, that's some, yeah. Pretty good stuff. Um, have you ever been convicted of a crime? <laughs> uh, nothing more than a misdemeanor. No, well, well no, no, like, like uh, and, and I'm talking traffic violations is what I'm talking about. Uh, and it's actually lucky because when I was, when I was um, growing up, like, I, I totally hung with the wrong crowds and stuff, and I, I could have been convicted of a lot of things. Like, I, I did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done, so. Um, how long have you known Keith and Reese? Man, since uh, 1991, I think. So for 12 years, whatever. As of today, 12 years. <laughs> Our first band practice, we actually uh, just ran through the balls. We were like, it's two band practice, okay? So we jumped in the car and drove to the mall and, and uh, did like freestyle walking. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, how'd, how'd you guys like meet up and you know get together and get, get all this started in the beginning? Uh, well, as far as uh, Five Iron Frenzy was just a spin-off of this other band, and uh, like like I guess the, the 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 origins of Five Iron Frenzy were, were we were gonna cover a, uh, as X Mater we were gonna cover an Amy Grant song called Everywhere I Go, which has like the original version has a, almost a reggae influence and stuff, and uh, that. People have been nuts about that. They, they thought it was pretty cool with this, this whole sound and stuff. So we were like, let's try this, you know, see what, see what we can make. So we started listening to like Stink and Pickle and those kind of bands and, and noticed that there's this whole ska thing happening. And uh, that was probably about three three years or so before uh, before like the, the whole wave of third wave of ska hit, which was kind of cool. So. Um. <coughs> Is it hard being the best looking member of Five Iron Frenzy? It's tough, man. I gotta scrape them off. Just, you know, just scrape them off. That's what I gotta do. They're coming at me with their teeth and just latching onto me. I drag them. I drag them for miles. It's horrible. Um, if you were to be assaulted by one famous person, who would it be? <laughs> oh, man. Probably Michael Jackson, because I think that guy would snap if he did. <laughs> like, like, literally, I think his bones are just... It would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, by the way, I, I'm engaged. Speaking of girls. Oh, Speaking yes. Speaking of Michael Jackson, I'm engaged. <laughs> yes, you are engaged. What's his name and when are you moving to Vermont? <laughs> uh, his name is Trisha. Patricia. Trisha is her name. She's very cool. She's like a girl version of me with uh, girl parts. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Does she have a beard like you? She doesn't have a beard like me, no. Oh. She's got long hair in like the back, though. Oh, okay. To compensate. Yeah, to compensate. Yeah. <laughs> Together we make a hair mask. It's good. Uh, she's pretty gross, actually. It's kind of cool. Like we had, when when we met, it was actually at a Christmas party, and uh, she was um, trying to gross me out. She was actually trying to avoid all male contact because she because she'd just gotten out of a bad relationship. So she was being pretty uh, gross, which totally attracted me to her. <laughs> and so, yeah. If you had to either eat a bowl full of scabs or a bowl full of long greasy hair, which would you eat? A bowl full of scabs. Why? Just you'd probably put salt on it. It tastes better. No, you can't put anything on it. Can't put anything on it. Still, it's, it's the closest thing to meat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did he pick? Uh, a bowl full of scabs. It's yeah. the closest thing to meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, Reese, you're a fairly emotional person. Uh, I noticed you've, you've cried on stage during a couple of songs. Uh, I've seen you do similar things at, at church. Uh, do you feel that the emotion that you have inside of you helps you write better songs? Uh, am I supposed to be serious? <laughs> For a little bit. Oh, <laughs> you're supposed yes. to cry. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe.
maybe a little. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Um. <clears throat> uh, yes. I, I don't know. I, I think I've just kind of made a... I made a deal with Jesus back in the day. No. Uh, <laughs> I just decided, like, when, when I started writing songs that um, I'm kind of, I, I think Keith has been a big, big contributor to this, uh, that uh, just said it's important to be honest in your songs. Even writing songs from somebody else's point of view, like, if, if, it's, if it's done metaphorically, it's okay, but if it's something that you know, you're just doing to, I guess, to pull people's heartstrings or, or uh, I don't know, to, to get something. And if it's not honest, I, I don't think it's cool. So, I, I always try to, to write just from experience and, and honesty. Um, I know a couple of the songs uh, you've written about were about, uh, about Christy. Uh, do you... Uh, can you see a positive influence uh, on your life because of what happened between the two of you, or...? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say that, hands down, it was like the, the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it's, it's also the best thing. You know, it, it's taken three years to get to this point, but, like, I think that, yeah, you know, I, I look back and I, I would totally do it over again. <coughs> you know, like, <coughs> gosh, hi, I just woke up. Uh, I, I don't know. I like. I, I know that God has has given me much more patience, and I think that character-wise, I think that um, that my my perception of God beforehand, that like I, I viewed His character as something I had read about. You know, I was like, oh yeah, this is in the Bible. I, you know, God is this and this and this. And you, you don't really actually believe that stuff until until you have to. Until, until you don't want to, and God shows you that He really is merciful, and that He really is caring, and He really is loving, and um, and and I don't know, because it's it's easy when bad things are happening to to just be like, God, you're a jerk, you lied to me, and so sometimes when bad things happen, you you think those things, and He has to prove Himself to you, and and He has to me, it's pretty cool. Um. I know that uh, I know that um, your father is a saint. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, is how does that um, influence your life? Well, an old man near where I lived said that uh, Darth Vader killed my father, and I found out <clears throat> a couple years later that he was lying. Darth Vader is my father. He's always trying to get me to go to the dark side. Uh, it's just messed up, man. I'm serious. He's got like a robot hand and crap. He sounds like James Earl Jones. I'm just sick of it. But uh, I know there's good in him. I felt it. Oh. <laughs> uh, how does it affect me that my dad is not saved? Um, he's probably gonna see this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I love my dad. My dad is my hero. Um, I think, like, of my parents, I'm far more like my dad than I'm like my mom. Um, uh, he, he really is my hero. Like, I, I love my dad. I, 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 I try and be like my dad. I wanna, I wanna be like Mike. That's my dad's name, by the way. Anyway, uh,. <laughs> Anyway, Keith pooped. No. <clears throat> oh, Sammy was locked outside. Uh, no. I guess. I guess about my dad not being saved. Um, I don't think. I don't think my dad appreciates like when people are all preachy and and they. I don't know. So I try my hardest just to love him and and pray for him. Yeah, I want my dad to be saved. More than anything, it's probably my greatest fear. I think that a lot of what that goes on in the in just in his world would be wouldn't be so problematic if he was saved. I think that just the way he is, I don't know. He he he's like the best salesman I've I've ever known. He he and uh, 
don't know. He he could totally sell. He could sell a ketchup popsicle to a man wearing white gloves. And and and, and I think that has rubbed off on me. And I I would love to see him get saved just because I think he would be he'd be awesome at it. He'd be really good. He'd be the awesomest. To coin a phrase. <laughs> um, one, one more serious question. I know uh, you've had a, a lot of uh, frustrations in uh, job-wise. Like I remember you've wanted to, to go to space and uh, work for comic books and things of that nature. Uh, do you have any regrets in choosing the profession you did? Um, on every other day, I do. I, I uh, every other day I, I wake up and I have my fingers around someone's neck, I'm ready to kill them, and that, you can cut that out. I don't, I don't really kill people, I, I mean, sometimes I, I'm poisoned lightly. Where would you have <laughs> Uh, we lightly kill. I would make the bodies into some sort of hot dog or confectionery, and then feed them to, to starving children. So I, I would send them to my Compassion International child. <laughs> oh, God. This hot dog tastes like key. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, I, I was I was a pre-med student before we started the band, and I had good grades, and I was ready to go to medical school. And we started the band, and then my grades went down the toilet, so I can never go to medical school. But uh, I, I don't regret that. I, I have a friend who just became a doctor, and just watching him go through med school... And, I don't know, being in school so long made me not want it. I didn't want any more school. It's bad. Dude! Dude! It's okay. Dude! Okay, dude. Dude! dude. Man, the I was talking about getting shot in the butt. Dude, it's okay, because I just muted it. Okay. Yeah, but you, yeah. you could... Ah, who cares? You hear that really high-pitched noise. Yeah, the dude. hypersonic... That, that controls our minds. Dude, come on, you guys are going to be okay. We're not going to be okay, dude. It's controlling our minds. You know that... that Hypersonic buzz is, is mind controlled by the government. Dude, come on. It's mind Benny control. Hill. Mind, mind control, control by, by Fox. It's mind control. Mind it's control. Benny Hill. It's my, by the government. The mind control. It's mind control by the. Hey, the government. Mind controlling. What's your uh, impression, say, of them using your picture on the Cornerstone website and you know the flyer they got? <laughs> I feel funny. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, that's... Well, I don't know. I, I got some Gatorade yesterday because of it. I, I was like, do you know who I am? I'm him. Give me some Gatorade. No, I didn't really. <laughs> um, if you were to make uh, a movie about any video game and have it actually turn out good instead of, like, Super Mario Brothers movie, which sucked, uh... What movie, what what video game would you do? Um, have you ever, I, there used to be this uh, old Atari 2600 game, and it was really cool. And there's like this alien, and you had to find these. He'd fall in a hole, and you'd make him go around, and uh, he'd find these components for some sort of device to try and get himself home. And uh, I can't remember what it's called. It was like um, E.T. It was called E.T. The Extraterrestrial, and it was a rad yeah, game. That was really cool. To the game, and I'd make a movie out of that. That was good. <clears throat> if you had to choose one pair of Sonny's underwear to wear, what pair would it be? Either one. They're cane. <laughs> oh, that's, that looks like your all your shirts. Yeah. <laughs> They match. Uh, I would pick his Grinch underwear. How about my Senior Frogs? Oh, it's his Senior <laughs> Frogs underwear. No, the Grinch underwear is pretty good. Those are pajamas. Oh, he has um, Grinch pajamas. They're for, they're really cool. How come you're not wearing those right now? Because it's too tired. Oh. He's too tired for pajamas. Jesus Loves Me Very Much shirt. Are you wearing that today? Sure. That's a praise the Lord. <laughs> Earthquake. In central Illinois. Here's, an <laughs> Here's an earthquake going on, I guess.
All right, Keith, you've been in the band since the very beginning. How have you experienced God bringing changes through your band? Mm. <clears throat> um, okay. You mean in, in my life personally or in other? Or? Um, in your life and uh, in, in general in the band. Like I know like people write us letters and people come up and tell us stories all the time about how God has um, has worked in their lives using our band as as part of the tool. Like I know like, we played in Fresno um, and this girl came up and she was like she she actually had us all sign a lighter and um, she was like, Yeah, I used to be addicted to crack and now I got off and it's because of God. God used your guys' band to to help me get off of crack, and I'm like, whoa. So the lighter that we were signing was what she used to use to, to smoke crack. Um, so, I mean, that's just amazing that God does that kind of stuff. Like, it totally in spite of, of us. Um, I guess in my own personal life, but it's just, it's hard just trusting God, and, and, and I think that that's something that we're trying to learn is, is how, like, because we don't know really what we never plan anything out like in, in terms of, of, of what to do on stage and stuff like that we try and let God tell us what to do every night and what to say and um, so that takes that takes a lot of faith it's like just trusting that God is gonna is going to to have us do whatever he wants us to do and we try and be obedient to him so. um, do you ever feel uh, any sort of internal uh, conflict in your band? Between the members? Between the members. Oh, of course, there's some, but not like, I mean, this is, uh, people say that like being in a band is like being married to the people in the band, so everybody in the band is like married to seven other people, plus, you know, the people who actually are married. It's like, you know, when we go on tour, it's like, you know, 10, 12 people on tour. And it's he, totally legal in Utah to be married to seven In Utah, people. it is legal to be married to seven other <laughs> Sorry to all of our Utah friends. We just played in Utah, and it was a great show, so thanks. Um, no, I mean, like, you get you get 12 people in a little tiny area for two months. Of course, there's going to be arguments and stuff like that, but I don't know, it's nothing major. Uh, you mentioned Utah. I know you've played uh, in front of Mormon crowds and uh, probably in front of Catholic crowds and things of this nature. Do you feel uh, <clears throat> at all weird about playing in front of these people, or no? They're just people. They're just people who like music. I mean, we play in front of like at least, especially like I mean, with with both of those religions, I think that there are a number of people who. Um, who are definitely followers of Jesus, who, who are Catholic and Mormon or whatever. I mean, Jesus is, is way larger than any denomination, you know? And, I mean, so that's, that's not weird at all. It's just playing in front of people who, who want to hear some music. And, I mean, we certainly <clears throat> play in front of people who don't believe in Jesus at all and are, and are hostile towards, towards that kind of thing. And, and so I don't see why it would be any weirder to, to play in front of, of people who are, are, are a different denomination than us or whatever. Um, I've been, there have been a lot of uh, you know, recent marriages and engagements in the, in the band. Uh, do you ever feel uh, a, a stronger calling to try to you know, get married? Because I know you're older than most of the band, aren't you? Um, second oldest, yeah. Second oldest. Do you ever feel uh, strange about that? The, mm -hmm. the other people in the band can... No, <laughs> I think that, I mean, you just, you have faith that God, God has some sort of plan for your life, and it's not something to worry about. I've been told you're a pretty, you're a pretty big lady killer. Have you ever actually killed a lady? I've never actually killed a lady, no. That's a rumor. Right. But when people keep bringing it up, it makes me want to make, make more, never mind, I screwed that joke up. It was from Ren and Stimpy, I screwed it up. <laughs> Do it again. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> if, if, you were, if you were to kill a lady, how would you get rid of the body? <clears throat> hmm. Have you seen Minority Report? That's the future of body hiding right there. No. Uh. Gosh. I don't. I don't know. Probably. Have you seen Blood Simple? Joel and Ethan Cohen's first movie. That's a good one. They incinerate the body. That's kind of cool. 
Um, I don't know. I don't, I've never really, I've, I've never thought about it <laughs> much. Uh, if you, if you could be made entirely Talk about out of my Velcro shoes, dude. Like okay. Uh, Please check those out. Why do you have Velcro on your shoes? Because it's hip. Can you actually tie a knot? Uh, sometimes. Yes, I can. I can. Did you have to go through remedial schooling at all? No. Um, I've heard it said that your house smells pretty bad. What do you say to that? Um, that would, I don't know. Does our house smell bad? Yeah. Uh, only in the bathroom part. <laughs> backyard. Oh, in the dog poop part. Yeah, there's dog poop in the backyard and actually, I mean, Reese. <laughs> I don't stink. Only in the butt part. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the other problem. It's like, we, we, Reese and I live in the basement part of this house, and the restroom doesn't have a fan or a window. And when you come down the stairs, it's right at the bottom of the stairs. So, like, you walk down into the basement. If somebody's recently visited the restroom, it's the first thing that you're going to smell. And, and, I mean, that'll just taint your... your... <laughs> We're talking about all the... Uh, Euphemisms for the chode, the the what is it called? The the perineum. The perineum is the scientific term. I don't think it's called the chode, Keith. No, the, the per perineum. That's still something else. No, no, no. The chode, the taint, the seam. Isn't the the bunch? It's that the the raised uh, ridge in between the yeah. testicles and the business end of the <laughs> large intestine. <laughs> that's, that's that's the perineum. <clears throat> Can we just get a close-up uh, shot of Keith screaming? <laughs> oh no! Whoa. You guys can dub in, yeah. dub in, dub in Macaulay Culkin scream from. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Wilhelm. <laughs> uh, if you could be made entirely out of wood and stretch out your body parts, but you would always float on top of water, or be made out of metal and not be able to be punctured, and sink to the bottom of water every time you went in, which would you do? Why can you stretch out your body parts if you're made of you wood? You just would. You can spontaneously do it. <laughs> That's not a property of wood. It is now. I think the question is inherently flawed. I think we should move on. You know, I don't like this hostile tone you're taking with me. <laughs> um, Are you sure you've never disposed of a body? <laughs> if I was made out of metal, could I breathe underwater? You wouldn't need to breathe. Yeah, then I'd be made out of metal, probably. This would this would encumber any and all space travel, however, because you'd become a little too heavy for for the for the rocket ship. Does that make is that is that okay to you? You didn't say that before. Well, it's pretty obvious. You're made out of metal, dude. Yeah, so is the spaceship. Yeah, but the astronauts aren't. All for the flying car. You know, so <laughs> how, how much how much am I going to weigh here? Well, you'll weigh about as much as three astronauts. You no, you weigh probably about as much as um as you would if you're if Dude, all the parts take, of your body were made take, out of metal. They take big satellites and stuff into space. Yeah, but they don't put them in chairs. They can, they can make a special a special chair. They have the technology. You know what? I don't think NASA does have the technology. They have the technology. You you are getting a little hostile. Have, no, you, no. have you ever killed a man? I'm not <laughs> <hostile>. <laughs> no, uh, have I ever killed a man? No, I haven't. You sure? I'm sure. Were you drunk at the time? <laughs> uh, no. You sure? I mean, yes. I mean, see, that's a trick question. <laughs>